Oi! Give that back! These things are in limited supply. Oh, what a bunch of pranksters. Always moving my blocks around. I, sp oh, I suppose you're responsible for that glass block too. Mm. Oh. Mm. Oh. 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 Mm. Oh. 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 Mm. Uh. 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 Now that is looking a whole lot better. Oi! Oi! Hello everybody and welcome back to Minecraft The Journey with me, Bugman CX. This is the Let's Play series where we upgrade a survival world of Minecraft through all of the versions, exploring the game's history and development all along the way. We're currently in Beta 1.8.1 and we've pretty much finished with this whole Beta 1.8 era of the game and we're ready to move on to Beta 1.9, edging our way closer and closer to Minecraft's release era. So close, I can almost taste it. But before we do that, Let's take a look back at the adventure update and see how we got here. In 2011, the adventure update was Minecraft's biggest release to date. It was first announced on June the 10th, 2011 by Notch and was originally planned to come out as Beta 1.7, but it was just too big and taking so long that Beta 1.7 was released with just pistons to keep the players happy. And the adventure update was then split into two parts to be known as Beta 1.8 and Beta 1.9. We've already explored the first part, which is Beta 1.8, and in Beta 1.8 we got loads of new features, but not all of them were finished. We got features like strongholds, but they're just basic structures right now, with one big change to them coming up pretty soon. We got villages, but again, right now they're just ghost towns. We got all new biome generation, which completely changed the world around us, giving us new biomes and giant oceans. We got new mobs like the Endervan, mine shafts and cave spiders, and a new food and hunger system. And plenty more to follow in the next series of versions, the Beta 1.9 pre-releases. But if these are Beta 1.9 pre-releases, then why do so many people consider these versions part of the Minecraft release era? Well, it all comes down to planning, or rather, lack of planning. You see, pre-releases or release candidates are supposed to come out before the main release. We had a series of pre-releases for Beta 1.8 before that came out, so you'd think that after the Beta 1.9 pre-releases, we'd see a full release of Beta 1.9. But there is no full version of Beta 1.9. Beta 1.9 was planned to be released once the adventure update was considered complete, at some point in October. But with Minecon 2011 right around the corner in November, it was ultimately decided that the end of development for the adventure update would become release version 1.0, and that was announced for release at Minecon. So, no need for Beta 1.9 after all. So technically this means that the series of pre-releases we're about to explore are technically just pre-releases for Minecraft 1.0. But we're getting way ahead of ourselves here, we haven't even got to Beta 1.9 yet, so why not do that? Let's move up to Beta 1.9 pre-release. Wow, look at this, I can't believe it. Minecraft Beta 1.9 pre-release, I cannot believe we've come this far. So, does everything look the same, or does everything look different? Hey, oh, uh, oh, oh, we've got the drippy drippies. I hadn't even noticed that we didn't have that in these versions. I guess that was a new addition to this version. I, I'm sure we'll find that everywhere now. But yes, Minecraft Beta 1.9 pre-release, unbelievable. And I think that it's gonna start getting quite different from this point forward because the Beta 1.9 pre-releases are gonna add a lot of new functionality into the game and change things a lot. But hey, that's all part of the journey, right? One other thing is that I don't want to rush through these Beta 1.9 pre-releases too fast. It's quite a complex era of the game and I want to make sure I get it right. Whoa, hi! Uh, yeah, alright, um, goodbye. Um, yes, where was I? 
Right, not upgrading too quickly, because there are a lot of interesting quirks and bugs to explore, as well as some features that are still half implemented. So it's going to be very interesting to try and explore all of those in depth through the pre-releases, but I still need to make sure that I don't miss out on anything important, because once we've upgraded, I don't really want to go back. So we'll have to plan carefully. The members of my Discord server help me plan and work out what sort of things I need to be on the lookout for in versions like these, so if you're interested in doing that, the details on how to join my Discord server are all down below. And while I'm here, I might as well plug some other stuff, right? Like if you're interested in supporting me directly, you can follow the links to Patreon below, or alternatively, just click the super thanks down below this video. But otherwise, by just subscribing, liking and commenting, all of that stuff helps my channel grow. Now, back to beta 1.9. Well, this is the adventure update. So let's go adventuring. We can explore some of the new biome changes out there in the new terrain, but because the biomes have been updated again, we're gonna encounter even more chunk borders out there as soon as we cross into newly generated chunks. Well, this is the adventure update part two, so why don't we go out adventuring? We can expect to see some changes out there in the wide new world because the biomes are now all different. Oh, look at these delicious pork chops. I'm gonna take all of them with me. In beta 1.8, the snowy and ice styles of biomes were removed from the game. I'm really not sure why, but it's meant that we haven't had access to any snowy or icy biomes since we upgraded. Luckily we still had the previously generated ones if we needed them, but if you started out a new world in beta 1.8, it would have been impossible to get access to snow or ice. In beta 1.9, the tundra has returned and it's now known as the ice plains, and a new frozen ocean biome has been added. There's also a brand new biome, which is going to be completely different to anything we've seen before, but they're pretty rare and it might be difficult to find one. But we're going to encounter our very first change right here on our own doorstep. The swamps have been updated and they look ugly. Let's go take a closer look. Ugh, oh, yuck. So what exactly is going on here? Well, the tinting of this biome has changed and that affects the grass, the leaves, and even the water. Look at that, it's kind of a darker color with some weird green bits in it. And it's not even that obvious once you're inside of the swamp. But let's just head back towards the base here and you'll start to really see the difference. Here you can start to see the transition between this browny green color to a gray green color. And then as we head up this way, we get to this block here and the transition is just instant. It goes instantly from this color to this color. And I guess that's because once you move off of this block and onto this block, this is where you've actively switched biomes. But this is a pretty rough transition, wouldn't you say? Um, doesn't blend very well at all. In fact, oh, just head over here and have a look at this. You can see here, this just looks like a big gray brown mud patch or something like that. And here as well, you can see it in the water as well. Absolutely no blending. So it just looks really, really weird. Now I wanna do a couple of experiments and it looks like we have the perfect spot right here because we are just on the edge of the biome transition right here. So if I plant a tree right here and then bone meal it, I should get one quarter irregular leaves and then three quarters really, really dark leaves. Wow, they look almost black to me. They look like a charcoal, very, very dark gray color. I'm really quite surprised by the choice of tinting in this biome. Now, the other thing we can do, of course, is use our shears because if we use shears, we can take off leaves from the tree like this. And if I do pick these up uh, and pop them down, we'll see that I have the normal green tinting here, but I'm pretty sure if I place this one down, yeah, we get that horrible brown gray tinting. And if I break the leaves off of the tree here, you'll see that they drop with their default green color. There's no way to obtain an already tinted leaf. It's just a tinting effect that affects the blocks that are already placed in the world. I've set up a little bit of a grassy, leafy gradient here, and you can see a few different transitions. We have this browny gray leaf color right here, and you can also see the grass follows this transition as well. Right here, there's a change in the grass block between this and this color, and the same here with the leaves, I believe, although it's a little bit harder to see. And then further down here as well, we have another change to this brighter green color, which is the main color of the center of the swamp. So it looks like as you reach the edge of the swamp, biome border, it starts to transition from green into a gray-brown color and then get darker and darker to the edge 
where it just abruptly changes into this colour here and you would have thought that it might have been something like the other way around. It sort of seems like they've got this backwards, but this is how it is for now and it's going to stay this way until it gets changed in the future. I happened to notice something else too while I was doing that. Previously, you used to have to place a log in the ground or somewhere nearby if you wanted to create some bushes like this because the leaves need a log block nearby to connect to because basically they think they're part of a tree and they won't decay. If you placed a leaf block randomly somewhere like this, over time, it used to decay, and I didn't realize that this was a change that was actually implemented in beta 1.8. So now, if you place down leaf blocks, if they're placed down by either the player or an enderman, they'll no longer decay, and that's really useful because I have a lot of good ideas for using these things in the builds, and I've been waiting for this change. I just guess I didn't realize it was already in the game. Right, it's finally new chunk time. Oh, it's nice to just be exploring the wilderness again. Look, animals. I mean, I don't really explore too many new chunks in this world because every time I do, there's no going back. In the future, when the world changes its format again and when the terrain changes are introduced in future versions, all of these existing chunks are all gonna already exist. And when we go off to find new things, we have to venture out further and further into the world. But in a way, it's still always kind of refreshing to just go out and explore. Look at this. I thought I read somewhere that these roses stopped generating in one of the more recent versions, although I didn't really notice it until now. This is the first time I've seen roses in quite a long time. Hello, roses. Oh no, I forgot to bring a bed. Tell you what, it's the middle of the night and I can see ver Oh, look at that. Frozen. We're heading over there in a moment. But I was just going to say that it's the middle of the night and I can see everything. This game used to be very, very dark, and now everything seems surprisingly bright. In my settings here, I've got brightness on bright, and I usually do that for recording, but I'm going to bring it down and just see if I can notice the difference. Even here, I can see quite some distance now. This might have something to do with the new lighting engine that was introduced in beta 1.8, and interestingly, that's something that we never actually covered when we did explore beta 1.8, but there is a new lighting engine, and... I guess we're looking at it. Oh, you know what? I spent the whole night in this tree because I couldn't find any sheep. And look at them down there. What cozy beds you could have made. Oh well. Let's head into the ocean and over to this new biome. Look at that weird effect in the distance there. As I bob up and down, I guess my feet are going above and below the ocean depths. And so as I go down, it, it makes this... Strange bluing effect, or at least that's what I think's happening. Oh, Minecraft, you got some bugs, but look at this. We have a frozen section of the ocean here. Now, my understanding is that the frozen ocean includes these areas here, which are right next to the land mass, but it is possible to find these things out in the middle of the ocean as well. But for me, this is good enough. It's basically an ocean covered by a big sheet of ice. And this is not too dissimilar from what we've seen before around the, the tundra area in the past. But as I said, this can form out in the middle of the ocean as well. So it makes it unique and different, especially because in beta 1.8, the oceans were added in as their own distinct biome, unlike beforehand where they were just part of the world generation. So the frozen ocean is effectively just a layer of ice above the water beneath us, not very much more to it. But I'm keen to get on the shore here and see if anything at all looks different. We've got some snow again, and I presume I can just use my shovel to get up the snowballs. Oh, we have access to snowballs again, oh, renewable snowballs at least, because I presume it's going to snow in this biome. We'll have to wait for the weather to kick in and find out, I suppose. This is pretty big actually, isn't it? So this is now the Snowy Plains, formerly known as the Tundra. Haha, <laughs> gotcha! Well, so far there isn't very much here, there's just a few trees and some snow. Not very exciting at all, so what else do we do in the snow? Make snow angels? I don't know, we could build an igloo I suppose. Oh, look, pumpkins, I've got an idea. Thank you. Now, when I was a kid growing up, I grew up in Australia and we don't have very much snow there. So I only ever remember going to the snow as a kid once. But when we were there, we did what every other kid did and we built a snowman. So let's make one right here in the snow as well. What? what? Hello? You're, you're alive? 
You're alive. Are you, are you friendly? I guess you're friendly. <laughs> I don't know what to make of this. This is unbelievable. I didn't expect to be able to create life out of inanimate objects. I must have powers beyond my wildest dreams. You know, let's see if we can do it again. Now, what was it? Just two snow blocks and then one pumpkin. <gasps> wow, two of them. We did it. We can create life. I'm going to gather up some snowballs and get back to base so that we can do some experiments on these new mobs and understand what they're all about. But how did we end up with the living snowman in the game? Well, a bit like the Enderman, Notch added this mob to the game because he needed a distraction from something else. Just one day before Beta 1.9 pre-release became publicly available, Notch said, got frustrated with AWS, so I made a new mob. Attached to his post is a picture which says, New Mob, Snowman. But this snowman is shown without a pumpkin for a head. And perhaps this is because Notch's original concept for the snowman would be that it's completely made of snow. Another interesting thing about this picture is that it's taken during development, and the version number in the top left reads, Beta 1.9. Notch followed up his tweet about the snowman by saying, It'll be craftable, is friendly, and throws snowballs at enemies. Also melts in hot biomes. But the name of Snowman didn't last very long. On Reddit, Cuttleman suggested that they should be called Snow Golems, and Notch agreed. Awesome. The new official name is Snow Golem. So now I think I understand why the Snow Golem keeps its pumpkin head. A golem is basically a creature made from inanimate objects that's been brought to life through magical spells. And since you create this golem by placing two snow blocks and a pumpkin, it makes more sense that it would retain its original form. It wouldn't make much sense if the pumpkin just disappeared. But I kind of like the original derpy snowman look, and I think the pumpkin kind of makes them look, well, a bit more aggressive and a lot less cute. But oh well, it is what it is. Back home again, just around the back from the base, which is over there behind the hairy mountain, and I've taken back some snow blocks and as many pumpkins as I could find and set up this little pen here, and I'm going to do some experiments on our new friend, the snowman. Look, complete with a fence gate, and by the way, just look at that thing. Doesn't it look strange? The original fence gate looks pretty weird to me. Well, I think we're pretty much ready to go, so I'm going to create our first snow golem to experiment on. And I was hoping it wouldn't melt. I, I didn't think that this biome would be too hot for it. But look at that. It's wandering around and creating snow already because this is one of the properties of the snow golem. And that is that as it moves around onto non-snow blocks, it'll generate snow. And that means we can convert this into a snow farm eventually, which is going to be very useful whenever we need to get ourselves snowballs. I did also notice though that it doesn't really work on these grasses, so I'm going to get rid of these and just let the thing wander around. I should close the gate as well just to make sure it can't escape. And now I'm really curious because Notch said that this is a passive mob, kind of a utility mob because it will defend itself against hostile mobs. So right now I'm not hostile, but I wonder what happens if I provoke it. Will it start throwing snowballs at me? Let's just give it a little love tap. Nope. No, it seems to be running around frantically like most passive mobs do whenever you, you punch them. So I guess that concludes it. This is technically a passive mob. The sun's now setting, so I'm curious to see what happens when we get some host- Whoa, hello. Get some hostile mobs spawning around us because we should see these things kick into defense mode. Got a couple of friends here I'm just luring in, but... Their AI doesn't seem to be very good in this version. They get stuck on blocks very, very easily. Oh, hello, the defense mechanisms have kicked in already. Let's get in and see if we can get a ringside seat. And look at that, they just, they just go on attack mode, don't they? And these zombies, they have no chance. But the issue is, let's get out here. The issue is that snowballs don't do any damage. So while these three clowns up here are capable of pushing the zombies back, the zombies just won't take any damage and they'll just keep coming and coming. Come on, you idiots. <laughs> well, we seem to have one SKP and I don't know how that happened, but yeah, yeah, these things could definitely be used as some sort of turret to keep your, your base. Oh, oh, it's killed it. Oh. So what did we learn from that? Well, I think if we're going to use these things as turrets to keep some mobs away from the base, then they have to be well protected. 
Now this has me wondering, is it possible to create a snow golem using a piston or does the golem creation have to be purely player based? Let's see, excuse me, let's see what we can do with this lever. No, unfortunately we can't do that because it just pops the pumpkin off. I should have thought of that because that's how you harvest pumpkins. But my understanding is that it is possible for Enderman to create snowmen if you set up the right conditions. Now unfortunately I've only got limited time to finish my experiments on the snow golem in this episode because after I finish recording this I'm going on holiday for a little bit, but I'll make sure to continue the experiments in the next episode. But before I do go, there are one or two other things I want to make sure we do test. First, I've just noticed over here that we have ice forming in this water over here and I think what that's telling me is that this area here must be a cold biome. And that's a little bit worrying because it's right behind the base and that means that at any time it snows, we could potentially be being covered in snow. We'll have to wait and see what happens with that. And I'm hoping that this is still a desert and not now a cold biome because I need to experiment with what happens to a snowman if you put it in a hot biome and this is a hot biome. So let's just see what happens here. And I think we'll find out pretty quickly Oh, okay, okay, you live, but at the moment you're not placing down any snow underneath you, which is a really weird thing to see. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen a snow golem wander around and not place snow beneath it. Huh, snow golems can swim. Anyway, I've double checked the world seed just to make sure that this area here is in fact a desert, and it is. So this behavior of the snow golem not leaving a snow trail underneath it and not melting in a hot biome, is normal, for this version at least. So this is something else to keep an eye on. Considering how that last experiment went, I'm honestly not even sure- uh oh. I'm honestly not even sure how this one's going to go, but I want to see what happens if we create snow golems in the nether. Will they melt? Will they stay? I don't know, but first I've got to get rid of these things! Ugh. All right, it looks all clear. Okay, let's see what happens. I'm very, very curious. You live! Oh, oh no! Oh no, it's gone straight after the pigment and died. But it is possible to create snow golems in the nether and they won't melt. And I just wonder what kind of applications that could have. I wonder if that changes in the next version. I think what I'll do is I'll set up some snow golems somewhere where the pigmen can't get to them and hopefully we can keep a snow golem in the nether. That would be very interesting. Before I go for today, I thought I would just make this very crude snowball farm. And if I place a pumpkin right up here, I should be able to create a snow golem. And because they put snow layers underneath anywhere they walk, I should just now be able to use my shovel like this and get unlimited snowballs. And in fact, if that snow golem lines itself up between these two blocks, it'll even be doubly efficient for me to gather snowballs. But it's doing a good enough job right now. Look how many there are, <laughs> wow. But that's the end of today's episode, so I want to say thank you for watching and an extra special, wonderful, amazing thank you to my patrons for supporting me, and I'll see all of you in the next episode. Until then, this has been Bugman CX. You've been watching Minecraft The Journey. Snowballs! Snowballs!